What's going on everybody? Today we're gonna to be doing a deep dive in my old Mastercraft toolbox here. I'm gonna go over all the tools I use to make these videos, work on my FZ6, as well as my other vehicles. Everything from the basic tools you need to get the odd job done on the FZ6 to, well, everything you need to work on the FZ6. So I hope this is an informative video for you guys and hopefully I show you that you really don't need that much. There are some specialty tools I'd always recommend picking up, but you don't need a lot to work on the FZ6 and I thought I'd show you that here today because pretty much everything in front of me today is what I use to film the videos and work on my own stuff. Some of it you don't need, like you don't need a nice big Milwaukee impact, but it sure helps. So we're gonna get into all the nitty gritty details of what's going on in this box here. So come along for the ride. Before we do that, smash like and subscribe button down below. It really helped me out. Now let's go. This here, everything in front of me is the bread and butter to what I use on a daily basis. Right off the bat, we have a cheap Mastercraft set of sockets and ratchet that I got years ago, which the ratchet kind of sucks, but everything else in here is lifetime warrantied and it's held up over my recreational use. Next up is a set of wrenches from Harbor Freight. It's got everything from seven eighths down to a one quarter inch on the Imperial side or the Freedom units. And it's got everything from 19 down to six millimeter that you could use in a nice chrome finish highly durable well pittsburgh brand wrench and it's quality this has lasted me it's it's not as nice as your jet wrenches with the special teeth in the openings and the extra special bite in the 12 point end but it works and it doesn't rust because it's a full chromoly finish and this has lasted me really well would you believe i bought this set for 20 bucks next up a lot of what you use on the fz6 is allen keys certainly not the freedom unit so pretty much just get rid of those but these mastercraft set it's nothing nice they're just chromoly steel they rust obviously because I've let a little water get on them, but they do the trick. They're hard enough that they don't round the edges and break like a cheap Chinese tool, uh, and it's it served me well. I have bought some 3 8 drive version Allen keys of this, of my high use ones, just because it's nice to be able to put an Allen key on an electric tool. Then comes my ratchets. I've got everything from a one quarter drive to a half inch drive. I got my small quarter inch, mostly for my like Torx sockets and stuff like that, when I only have a socket that comes in a quarter drive or when you have to get in that really tight space. And then my two workhorses, basically your standard length 3 8 drive and my extra long 3 8 drive. This is the workhorse of the channel. Something about this combination just works really well for me. The extra length gives you more torque than you get on this little guy. And I don't know, it just has the right amount of length and size that doesn't often get caught up in a certain area, like while working on a car or underneath the intake of the bike. This is kind of just a nice size. I really value this tool and I've had it for the longest out of anything here. Next up, the Mac Daddy of everything, another jet half inch drive flex head. This thing is mostly for suspension or axle nuts uh, on the bike, but this is just a beaut. When I got this, I contemplated long and hard over did I want the flex head or not, but ultimately I'm happy with the flex head because the flex head just, just lets you use this wrench in so many different places where it wouldn't usually be possible. If you gotta line something up and all you need is just a little bit of room to get around a suspension arm or just to give you more angle from your knuckles, it's really nice to have the flex head. And since it's jet, it's a really nice fit. It doesn't feel sloppy. It doesn't take away from the tool at all. Real nice piece of equipment. Then for extensions, basically got a one foot three eighths, a six inch three eighths, a jet three inch three eighths, and then a small like inch and a half, uh, one quarter inch extension. To make everything come together, you've got an array of adapters. You've got, you know, your one quarter to three eighths male, your three eighths female to one quarter male, uh, your commonly used half inch female down to three eighths male, really common in the shop, you know, bind for a socket choice. And then the reverse of that, three eighths female to one half inch female. I don't use these much on the motorcycle world. It's certainly valuable to have one when you break a socket and you only have it in a different drive size. You don't have to take a trip to the stores, throw an adapter on it and you're good to go. Finally, the cursed of all things, a three eighths universal. I don't use this much, but it's really only one of those emergency things, but you'll never value a tool more than when you need it. So it's great to just have one in the toolbox. Having started in the Mastercraft realm, I basically started buying these ratchets because this one failed. It sucked. The button works okay, but the ratchets are so rough and so far apart that working in a tight space where you don't have a lot of room to ratchet, it just isn't the, it's not the tool for the job. It's cheap, like the whole rest of the set, but this is just really not what you want. It's go spend the extra 20 bucks, buy a nice jet tool, lifetime warranty, internal parts are just way better. The mechanism and the buttons, everything's just built so much better and it won't rest. It's just built to a nicer degree. But enough of this nonsense. What about the FZ6 specific tools? These two are absolute gems. 
If you can't tell, they're a 3 8 drive, long Allen head. One's a 5 mil, one's a 6 mil. These have come in clutch so many times when working on the FZ6. Something about the ability just to throw this on an electric tool and ratchet it from away is so nice. Instead of having to use an Allen key like this, it's just a wonder to have this. Let alone the wobble nose, real nice addition. Some people are for the wobble nose, some are against. I've really liked it. Just gives you that extra wiggle room to get the job done. And the length is just really nice. Sometimes this gets in the way and you just need a short one, but when you need a long one, this one does the trick. Continuing on the FZ6 specific area of things that I've accumulated is stuff like this short stubby Phillips. Bikes are a tight area to work in and it's great to have an amazing screwdriver like the Pick Quick here, which is just a multi screwdriver. Got your Phillips, Robertson, flathead all tucked into the handle. Honestly, this is my best multi tool I think I've ever bought. If you want to check it out, it's called Pick Quick. I'll put it on the screen because mine's pretty worn off. But just having a nice stubby number two Phillips like this has come in handy so many times it's hard to count. Along with that, whether you're doing a basic maintenance like a spark plug job, you definitely want to have these, which is just a spark plug gapper. This is an old style kind of spark plug gapper. It's got wires with different gauges around it that correspond to a different thickness in thousandths of an inch. You can use those to set your gap. But in the same vein, you could also buy a set of feeler gauges. This one's by Gear Wrench, and it's just a ground piece of metal off the end here with a varying thickness so you can check a gap. I often use these two in conjunction just to confirm what this one says and feels like with another standard. So this is a good backup. You can also use this one for checking valve lash if you want to go really deep into the engine. Next up is two kind of specialty pliers, both long nose needle nose, one straight, one bent. Now they both have very different uses and applications. I've even used these to turn things at times like in my S15 video, but this is just the workhorse for getting those little spring clamps that hold your coolant pipes together like on your intake manifold and your radiator. This comes in clutch. I cannot tell you how many times this little like 45 degree bend here has saved my bacon. It is wonderful. I've even got another set somewhere. I just can't find them today of a 90 degree bend. It's wonderful to have a whole array of long needle nose like this. It just saves a lot of work fighting around with those stupid linesman pliers or blunt nose pliers trying to get a hose from a distance in a narrow spot. This is the move. A chain brush for those uh, seasonal chain cleans. Next are my specialty kind of deep sockets and ratcheting wrenches. I'd love to have a flex head of every single common metric size, but I only have one in the 17 because I needed it once. <laughs> Otherwise, I've got a ratcheting wrench for all the common metric sizes like 10, 12, 14, 17, which is just super handy. When you know when you've got a tight space, you don't want to lift your wrench off, go back on, you got a little... And you buy a high quality brand like Jet, you, don't, you have a great precision on it, you get lots of clicks per rotation. It's just the tool that can save your wrist and save a ton of time on a job. After that, we've just got every common size in deep and every size that I need commonly, I'll buy in a 12 point. So I've got my 12 point 10 mil, 12 mil and 14 mil. Everything else you don't really need in a 12 point because I've not really run into it. And personally, I prefer a six point every day of the week. I used to think 12 points were the bomb.com, but really it's just less surface area of engagement on the same nut or bolt, which leads to more commonly rounding it off. And you combine that with an impact tool or something like that, it's a re recipe for disaster. So six points are really what you need to begin with. You only really need 12 points for specialty nuts and bolts. Since I own a European vehicle, I've had to pick up uh, an external Torx and internal Torx set. Really just basic, same jet or performance tool, whatever I could get at Lordco at the time. And it's mostly European things. You don't see this very often unless Yamaha is trying to pull a fast one on you and put a security bit in place to prevent you from doing some job. But I've never need these on the FZ6. It's really a European thing. The pliers, I just have this cheap set of Mastercraft stuff I got years ago as a gift, but it's worked. Um, there's nothing nice about them. They work. They're kind of finicky. Some of them, like the slip joint pliers, don't slide the nicest. They aren't the best tools, but they get the job done. And if you're looking for a cheap set of pliers that'll just cover most of the things you need, Canadian Tire Mastercraft is a good place to go. When it comes to diagnosing things on the FZ6, it's key to have a nice multimeter. This one by no means is the top shelf tier brand or anything. It's Victor, the VC890C+. The one trick thing about this thing is it can measure temperature, so you can change out the probes here and measure the temperature or something. So if you want to like touch it against your header, you could do something like that to figure out if a cylinder's misfiring. But generally, it's just built well. Uh, this has saved my butt so many times, whether it's just sussing out charging issues or a bunch of different problems. One of the really nice things this does, though, is what's called true RMS. 
it'll essentially give you an accurate resistance reading and zero its own resistance. So when you touch the two leads together here, it'll go down to zero completely. And that tells you a true reading. Other multimeters, like the other ones I've used from Mastercraft Canadian Tire, will read like 0.3 of an ohm because the wires here have resistance. But this machine is calibrated to understand that these wires are not to be measured within the resistance. So it's just a nicer feature of a better multimeter. But you use what you can get your hands on. For the most part, I use this just to measure voltage and resistance, and very rarely am I measuring like amperage or something like that. But if I truly need to, I will. Last but certainly not least, I'd highly recommend you pick up a half inch drive torque wrench. This here is a Jet 50 to 250 foot pound torque wrench. And it, it's the workhorse for wheels, axles, swing arms, whatever you've got. This is just a really simple and affordable, high quality torque wrench. It's the twist type where you loosen off the handle, tighten it into spec, lock it in place, do your torquing. But you, with the problem with these torque wrenches that you always have to remember to set them back to zero. If you leave this stored, set up, like wound up, ready to be used, it'll throw off the spring that's inside here that is used to calibrate and, and set how much torque you want to apply at the head. One of the things I'd love to add to my tool kit is a 3 8 drive torque wrench. It'll do something below 50 foot pounds. This is a great torque wrench and all, but it's very common to use on the FZ6 stuff below 50 foot pounds. I've gotten by without having one, but I'd really like to pick one up. Maybe a digital one in the future. I keep a pick tool set on hand just whenever, you know, European things happen, you gotta pull a clip or move an O-ring. This is just really handy to have. Being someone that doesn't wanna buy just one of everything off the bat when I don't need it, I've acquired some of these assorted sockets for random things. This is an O2 sensor socket, just an offset type, it's coming real handy. Another O2 socket, this is a crow's foot 22 millimeter that I've got an adapter in. Once again, BMW things, hard to reach oxygen sensors. Another BMW tool, this is a magnetic 14 millimeter 12 point weird BMW specific spark plug tool. It's magnetic, it's just, it's a good tool. You can use like a 12.14 standard one. Got a nice little magnet inside, it's the perfect size for BMW. It just does the trick. Sometimes having the right tool makes a job a lot easier. Next up, this is an FZ6 tool. This is a 27 millimeter 3 8 drive socket. Very obscure, hard to find them in the 3 8 size, but this is what you need to remove your swing arm pivot bolt. Next up, just removing CV axles or things like that. <laughs> you got a 32 millimeter six point and a 33 millimeter six point. Now this is more of a product than a tool, but the product comes with a good tool, which is a cable luber. I've used this in my video about four tips for max reliability. It's really just a tool to help you inject the light oil into your cable housing. This just blocks off one end while you push the lube through a straw into the housing and down the cable. It works for some, it doesn't really work for me, but it's definitely something I'm glad I've invested in and I have around if I need it. As for safety gear, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you've definitely seen me wearing this working on the XJ video because I despise inhaling gasoline fumes after too many times of inhaling them. And I love a set of half dip gloves. These ones are a bit thick for working in the winter, which are great. But if you don't wear gloves, get on to wearing gloves because it'll save your knuckles from so much cuts and so much dirt. Like I haven't been wearing them. You can see just handling the tools, my hands are dirty. So I love me a set of gloves and a gas mask to keep me feeling healthy working around those carbureted bikes is a real treat. Last but certainly not least are my favorite tools in the toolbox. You definitely don't need these to work on a car or a bike, but they definitely help. I got introduced to Milwaukee's lineup of electric tools with their 3H drive electric ratchet. Really great tool, it gets into tight spaces because the head is really small and you can really reach in somewhere and get things, but it's loud. When you're working with your head right next to it, it's a bit of a loud tool and it has a tendency to bust knuckles. When it starts light tightening down and torquing down on a bolt, it'll often throw your hand back when it gets torque and that just hurts. It's still great though, I still keep it in the arsenal, although it's largely been replaced by the Milwaukee 3H Stubby Impact. This is a gem of a tool. Love it to death. It does everything that this doesn't. It basically does higher torque, it has a couple different torque settings. You can torque till resistance, which basically means you won't over tighten the bolt when just running it in. Then you have three different torque settings and they all just provide different levels of power and rotation speed. This, it's a nice weight, it's a nice size. It can be used all around a car or a motorcycle because of its small format and the 3 8 drive just makes for it to work on a lot of sockets, small and big. Then I wanted something that was an electric tool that could just remove any nut. So I picked up Milwaukee's biggest half inch drive impact and this thing has claimed to have 1400 foot pounds of nut busting torque. And 
I don't know, I don't think it does quite 1,400 foot-pounds of torque. You can go check out the torque testing channel on YouTube. They do a lot of great reviews examining tools like this. But this is the heavy hitter in my arsenal. Whether it's a CV axle or a crank pulley bolt, this thing can get it done. And I really wanted an impact that wasn't gonna be stopped by anything. So this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to keep it in the family of Milwaukee, but I didn't want to go up to like a three quarter size uh, driver with a whole different setup. So this though, oh, when you pick this up, this probably weighs good 10 or 12 pounds with the battery. In comparison to the little stubby or the three eighths drive ratchet, this feels like you're curling weights in the gym. It, it puts in work, but you can see even when I go like, you, you can see when I go full power, it wants to twist it out of your hand. There's just so much weight and such a big motor and cogs inside here that it can be a bit abusive on the person holding it. You have to really have a good grip on it, but this thing has yet to let me down. To go with my big Milwaukee Impact, I have a set of Impact Deep Six Point Sockets, really just to be paired with, with my half inch driver along with the half inch Impact. The last few odds and ends I've collected over the years are things like a trim removal tool, small uh, flathead screwdrivers, a chisel, box cutter, some JB Weld, because you never know when you need that, some gasket maker, and a set of drill bits and then some specialty BMW flywheel tools. These are just kind of the little things you don't need always, but it's really just handy to have. You don't always use this to remove trim. Sometimes it's just the right size to get in somewhere and hold something apart, but it's kind of that miscellaneous area where it's great to have it and you definitely don't need it. That's a wrap on digging through all the tools in my little Mastercraft toolbox here. It really has grown beyond what it's capable of holding, but it really sits on my desk, so I don't really have anything to complain about. I hope this video inspired you to pick up the odd tool or really realize you don't need a lot to work on your vehicles. I know this might be intimidating to see how much I've collected over the years, but this has been a decade of collecting odds and ends of tools that I've needed for a specific job. The Yamaha Supplied Toolkit is a great place to start. Sure, the tools aren't nice. They're not like chrome coated and things. They won't last forever, but they will get you out of a pinch and they will help you get through the basic jobs that you're trying to achieve. My mantra is largely to buy tools when you need them instead of spending more money than you have to. And same, you don't have to buy electric tools to do these jobs. You see, them, you, you see me using them in the video, but you certainly don't need them. So I hope this video inspires you to pick up some tools and get wrenched on your bike as spring is coming around the corner. As always, thanks for watching everybody. Please smash like and subscribe button down below. Thanks for watching and as always, have a good day.